I, I just got done with the movie uh this morning actually, but uh very yeah. funny and it's uh it's extremely funny. And um so like when, after what when do you mean for it to be funny? What was the funny part? It's a <laughs> It's not what you expect because I mean I'm not overtly familiar with the show, but it's just so ab- absurd and it's like you're doing stuff that you would not like uh, in- exactly expect half the time because just like you sometimes you go for the obvious joke, sometimes you go for the joke that means like ten other different things as well. So um, and then these characters are very just like um, you just like like them. I mean it's not like hard to like really get like like them. You know they're just likable characters and uh so you like, so you've I, never I, seen so you've never seen this show this must have been pretty interesting for you yeah no i no I, i'll be honest no i hadn't seen the show prior to like the movie my first sort of exposure to it and it kind of helped because it's kind of structured like like a superhero movie essentially where you're like getting reintroduced to these these characters and then i had to, you know i did my background research and got saw that you guys had uh, you know this was your first like real big comeback after uh, like a decent hiatus yeah. So like when you when you first like got that um like cancellation notice in season eleven, did you guys ever think that the series was going to come back as like a series? We or... were so happy. We were so happy to get that notice. We didn't care if it ever came back. We didn't. <laughs> we were like, thank God you were canceling a hit show that's making you a billion dollars a day. We came um, we came to William Street with giant magnet gloves. And we were going to try to erase all the master tapes, but we were stopped at the, at the <laughs> yeah, because uh, like Magneto, cars started be coming towards us. <laughs> magnet gloves. Yeah, and that's dangerous. That's dangerous for a human. You know, a car weighs a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, Rohan, you're the you're the reason. You are the living example <clears throat> as to why this movie is going to do just beyond expectations. If you have never seen the show. If you've never heard of me and Dave, <clears throat> and then you watch the movie and you really like it and you identify with it, this thing is tracking billions of dollars. I'm serious. Awesome. I'm, 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 I am super intrigued. You've never seen the show, but you watched the movie. This morning, you had a cup of coffee and you were like, let's put this in. Yeah, no, I mean, I was yeah I didn't I had no idea what to expect and I was like I knew it was Adult Swim so I was like it's good to be something that's up my alley so then I know I really found straight up Rick and Morty it. business yeah yeah exactly and then so like you guys were sort of like around since the inception of Adult Swim in two thousand one and so like and you guys are still the longest running show on the network so have you how how do you think that you guys have like sort of aided in sort of like this ushering of this whole new era of these adult comedies like Rick and Morty. We were just ahead of our time in um, how we did things and how we wrote things. Um, you know, it's like going back with an electric guitar to Bach. <laughs> in a time machine to Bach. Yeah. And go check Tupac. this out. Not to Bach, but to Pac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like when, you, when you're breaking down, like, um, because I, I read that like the show, the, the show was about 12 minutes an episode, but like the movie comes in at like, around 80, 80 minutes, I think, give or take. And so like how, when you're breaking down the story of this show, cause like you really, really can do 80 minutes. You want. It's, it was actually 75 minutes. Yeah. Usually that, and I'm going to say that usually that's a bad sign when you look up at a comedy and you're like 75 minutes, uh oh, they had to chop a lot of stuff out. <laughs> but we were contractually told no more than 75 minutes or you're going to, or it's going to come out of your wallet. You're going to pay for it. So we did it. We give you every ounce of 75 minutes. Now, a lot of that is credits. A lot of that is words uh, going down really slowly and up until 75 minutes. And granted, we did start that at the, the 13 minute mark. So there's a lot of credits. But the, but the 13 minutes before that. And that's unusual for a film like this, because usually they try to <clears throat> make it funny all the way throughout. And we, you know, we just thought, well, we've been funny enough here that makes up for the time the credits are going to roll. So it kind of, it, it's a balance is what it is. Even though it is a very, it's a short movie, it is the longest credit bed sequence in motion picture history. The longest credits sequence. No, you guys got me with the, um, right when, right, right near the end when Meatwad and then, uh, 
the credits start rolling and I'm like, oh shit, is the movie over? And then, uh, then like, I, I mean, you guys go longer than you would think you guys would play out the credits and it's like the real credits. And then like the rest of the movie plays out at the end. But, um, well then, then, then there, then, then there's, then there's a full another hour and a half of just fun bloopers <laughs> yeah. at the end where people mess up their line. Like me, what's like, how do you do? Oh, I was supposed to say, how you do? <laughs> Let's <laughs> run it again. Let's run it. How you do it? Yeah, yeah. We drew that inspiration from uh, Burt Reynolds and Hooper. Yes. All sorts of Hooper bloopers. You're going to love it. You're going to love it, if, but you got to stay there in the theater. You got to stay there watching it for the next, after the, the extended credit sequence. For the yeah. Bloopers. So the, the theatrical version is going to be longer. So we just sent you the version up to a point. Because we don't trust you, Johan. We don't, we're, not, <laughs> we're not sure what you're going to print or not. <laughs> I gotcha. Uh, so, okay. like, when you when you guys are like going through um, scripting the the movie, it's like, are there and ever when like, are you like, do you guys ever really have to answer to anyone? It's like, is there any idea that's too out there or too weird or too over the line or anything? Or have you ever guys experienced that throughout making the show? Or is it just like what you guys think of? It's like, hey, let's put this and it'll be funny. Movies only take place in three settings: on land in outer space and underwater. We have all three in this movie. That's out there. But there's nowhere else to do movies. If there were, we would do them there. That, because that would blow people's minds. A fourth place to do a movie? But no. Uh, underwater, outer space, and on land. And that, what he just said, is exactly how we pitched this to Warner Brothers. And then once they understood that, they left us alone. They're like, we're going to use all eight. three Shakespearean settings. Awesome. I love it. And then, so, like, speaking of Warner Brothers, like, this show, this uh -huh. movie is going to stream on HBO Max, I uh, think, in a couple months after it comes out on Blu ray uh, next week. Um, what was like the conversation like initially about bringing this uh, back as a movie? And like, bring, or at least getting this movie made finally. It was like uh, <clears throat> they called and said, Will you make another movie? <laughs> and Dave and I said, yes. Yeah. They were like, what are you doing? We're like uh, cowering in terror with a mask over our face, uh, <laughs> figuring out how we're going to get food. And they're like, how'd you like to make a movie? For money. We're like, cool. I don't know how to make money in this environment. I'm going to have to steal food from my neighbors. And uh, made the whole movie during COVID. Yeah, over the phone. And so, like, because you guys are obviously two very funny people, it's like when you're doing these recording sessions with all the actors, it's like, uh, how many alt takes do you guys go through? How many different, like, variations of those lines are you guys going through? Or, or is it, like, all... Or it's like that. How much of it is like hundred percent scripted, or is it? Are you guys going back and forth with just to see what the funniest version could be? It. I mean, it's it's all it's all scripted, but we we have a blast in the booth, and we just have fun, and we play with the lines, and then you know, and then our editors kind of go to town, and you know, try to incorporate ad libs whenever possible, and um, you know, I should give a shout shout out to Ned Hastings who is kind of like our lead editor and and a producer in his own right who is with us at the very beginning and and uh, he kind of you know is sort of like the third voice on the tripod in a lot of ways like putting this all this stuff together and um but yeah I mean we have a lot of improv you know we try to incorporate as much of that as possible we hire funny people with weird voices and we let them go to town and, you know, if it sucks, we can always delete it. Um, and so like the big addition in this, um, in the film is uh, also Peter as Neil, who's sort of like, you can kind of tell, um, um, you can kind of tell who they, uh, I mean, who you guys are sort of basing him off. He's kind of an amalgama amalgamation of a bunch of different people. But it's like, how did that, the characters, how did you guys sort of conceive that character and, like, what did Peter sort of bring to that performance that, like, sort of pop, made him pop a little even more? Uh, well, that, that character was, was conceived by the bizarreness, bizarre behaviors of 
uh, Dorsey and Musk and Bezos, and we kind of put them all together into one thing. And then Peter brought, <clears throat> he just brought that voice to the table, man. He made it work. Um, super funny dude. Um, I'd never heard of him until Dave said, what about Peter? So I looked him up and like, we should get him. Yeah, no, he was perfect. And then so like another thing I really appreciate, because I'm a huge uh, basketball fan. And you guys had Sean Kemp in this movie, who I, I mean, he was a monster back in the day. And so like, what, how did that, how did you guys pitch it to Sean to, to do the cameo? And uh, how, what was that whole just entire process of working with him like? Well, it's kind of funny. We were, you know, the Space Jam thing and we were thinking like, what, what is the truck stop straight to video version of this? And who, who would be our LeBron James? And um, I'm not going to say it, but we wrote it for one specific retired uh, NBA player. And um, he, he was an animation fan that I had given a tour of our facilities. Like apparently there are adult swim fans in the NBA, but um but he turned us down. And then I actually talked to uh, Tom Sharpling about this, who was, used to write for NBA Inside Stuff. And he gave us a whole list of guys that he felt like would be funny. And Sean Kemp was like, I know he was popping up because he was putting out, he was retailing weed all over, uh, all over Seattle, you know? Mm -hmm. And so funny, like just, just real funny and real game to do it. And we shot that whole green screen thing with him and we all got in green screen suits and he just throws us around. And, but he was always so polite, like, and polite, like would pick everybody up with both hands and just be like, you okay? You okay? And we're like, really throw him around, really? And uh, he, um, and yeah, he was like, cool, man, this was fun. Uh, you ever come to Seattle, I'll give you half off. <laughs> it's my weed store so i guess he's got uh, all sorts of strains of, <laughs> of sean kemp style uh yeah he's very funny he's very funny in the movie i think no it was really cool to see him and uh, like I, I, so I read that the script had been completed uh, a couple years ago but it's like how did it sort of evolve before you guys went into production and like did, what did you got was there anything specific that you guys had to end up changing or to sort of um where did you read that? Where did you read that it was completed a couple of years ago? Uh, Wikipedia. Because that's a lie. Yeah, total lie. Okay, we're still writing it. Now. Send us. Send it. Can you send us that link? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, and I'll so we can alert our lawyers. All right. We have a white shoe legal firm that is taking this on pro bono, on our behalf. They're going to sue everybody. Yeah. Watch your back. They might sue you. Okay, I'll, I'll look forward to the, the subpoena. <laughs> but uh, th this has been so great. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it.